let's get started. So I'm going to take a look at one straggler from uh, last, well, submitted for today. Um, not because the others weren't done, the others were handed in on time, and I'm sorry if I didn't look at yours on Tuesday, but I feel like I would have just kept repeating the same topic over and over. Whereas this one, I feel like is open to a little bit more uh, variety and critique. And if I have time, I'll take a look at this one. Um, and this one, before I get started on the painting, which I might not have time to get to this one because of, um, I wanted to talk about basic composition. <clears throat> so what we're seeing here is a really, really simple like staging. You literally have so much going on and it's all on the same midground. You barely have anything happening in the background, but I, I don't know if you're trying to like create some kind of alien high diversity like the territory kind of habitat or some kind of ecosystem and you're trying to show how busy and diverse it is and how it, it's constantly moving or something and you're just throwing in all these different animals here. You're trying to show that it's a fantasy environment. You're pretty much just like taking the most basic tree shapes and putting interesting looking unusual alien creatures beside it. And, and hoping that by like making one adjacent to the other, you're, I don't know, like pulling off the, the alien landscape feel. And that's not going to work because you need to know that it starts with the trees. It starts with creating a different kind of tree landscape, a different kind of silhouette in the tree, a different kind of leaf, a different kind of pattern, something interesting there. And the animals are secondary. The environment always comes first. <coughs> But apart from that, apart from these areas, it's these two characters that really don't do well together. What you have here is a very simple story. It's, you called it Mother's Day, I think. And this was posted a while ago. So it's a Gorgon, Medusa, her daughter, I guess, that she turned to stone. She's mournful. She's regretting it. She's got. She's probably traveled here to see where her daughter died or something like that. So what's happening is that you are... The only really thing that you have going on that shows that she's remorseful is her hand on her chest and her and her arm reaching out. This is really bad acting. If you want to show real remorse, if you want to show uh, regret, if you want to show uh, mourning or some kind of loss, it starts with the gesture. So what I would have seen, I mean, there's not much we can do right now to salvage the illustration. I recommend starting it over because I love the concept. So the illustration right now. I'm going to add in another model for <coughs> the uh, female here that she has. Okay, so this is the frozen, her head stays by her butt. <laughs> this is the frozen kind of stone character that was turned to stone. So let's just put her there. And she's looking at her. What you need to do with when you redraft this illustration, you need to change the environment, change the, 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 the kind of what it is that you're trying to depict as the most important. So what I recommend is some kind of pedestal seat carrying this character up into a higher position. And then this character here clearly mourning, clearly thinking about something, and of course we have the expression to follow after, is looking at the character. So we have a relationship between face to face instead of just this hand and then this face looking down and this face looking away. If you want to make it so that she is looking away or she had some kind of sudden, um, like if she suddenly got turned to stone, then you need to change her gesture because she looks peaceful. So an exchange between the two lines of sight, a more stressed out, more um, uh, like distressed gesture for the character turned to stone more mournful surrender in the gesture of the character who is responsible for it, so the Medusa. And then the framing, so what I'm doing here is I'm trying to make it so that she is much bigger, much higher on the canvas in the framing than the onlooker. And that makes her look more weak, more surrendered, more afraid, more regretful, more of a loser. And her, of course, looks like, um, you know, whatever it is that she is depicting for the story. 
So fear would be a great uh, distress gesture to, to, to throw on to the stone character. Something really that stirs the emotion of the viewer. So something like hands over the head in defense or a shock or turning her head backward only to see or have seen her mother's face or Medusa's face. And then you have that shocked look, that turning around, that twist in the gesture would be really beautiful. Um, I I don't know if clothing also turns to stone. I don't know if that's how it works, because then my mind starts thinking like physically, and then what's impossible and what isn't. But let's just say clothing also turns into stone, not just the biology of a person. So, um, so you have a lot of cool opportunity to mess around with fabric frozen in air. Um, and, uh, you know, if you suddenly twist, your clothing moves around you, twists around you, so that gets also captured in the frame and then frozen in time. So there's only so much, really, I can do without having to repaint the whole thing and depicting how to uh, do a better job of delivering this. Um, uh, I mean, like, there's only so much I can do with what you currently have to salvage it if you don't want to restart it. I recommend restarting it. It's a great story. So the environment makes no sense. I really don't understand what's happening here. Everything is so like clustered together <clears throat> in one vertical landscape. I mean, one vertical canvas. You're really not leading the eye anywhere. There's no lines of sight or anything like that. One really cool thing that you could do is rotate the character. Okay. I really don't know if that muted. My mute button doesn't work anymore on this stupid ass Yeti. But, yeah, repositioning the characters to be something like this makes them look a little bit more desperate. Again, the fear in the character here looks a lot more cool. And then you really, by hiding Medusa's face, you really make her look more mysterious. Um, and just having those snakes coiling around, or maybe the snakes have fallen down in sort of another gesture of surrender. The snakes are all sad or depressed, or they kind of have a gentle coil everywhere instead of alert and high. Here the snakes look really alert. It's like it's mid-battle or something like that. Unless they're constantly moving around. You really have to think about these things because it'll affect the professional look of your affect how professional your work looks. And uh, you know, thinking even about the snake's gesture is an extension of that professionalism. Okay, so I really recommend something a little bit more planned out in the in the uh in the composition, I really like when, here let me just raise the field of view so that we have more foreshortening. That's really cool as well. And then you have that feminine gesture in the spine, the snakes kind of leading upward. You, we can go for a horizontal or vertical canvas, it's really up to you. And uh, if you want even more field of view, you can really go crazy with that. And you get that distortion. I don't go for that much field of view. I usually go for something smaller or lower, I mean. And that's pretty good. And then, yeah, imagine it. Fearful gesture frozen in time with the clothes billowing around, telling the person to stop and, the, of course, the person who caused it all. A couple of snakes here and there, maybe four or five snakes. You really don't need a hundred of them. Um, just so that they are a bit more bold, more bulky form studies that show off your cylinder, cylinder control and your radial shading control. And then from there, um, we obviously realize it's Medusa. And then if you want to go a little bit more toward that acting, something like this, something more desperate, more sad, kind of thinking about it. It's a little bit more cheesy like this, so I'm just letting you know, gestures like this look cheesy. I wouldn't do that. I would do the, the arms surrendered at either side, kind of afraid or kind of just um, full of, not afraid, sorry, full of, full of sadness and the fear and the arms up would be used on this. If her arms are up and her arms are up, it just looks too busy. So her arms could be saying, no, stop, please, and uh, ready to flee. And then you've got other arms. This, if you don't know what it is, it's Portrait Studio. And it is my crown jewel. And it is exactly, I'm using it exactly for the reason why we made it. In the middle of class, I can actually recreate a scene for you so that you guys understand what I'm talking about. 
heads when they are a bit more desperate they kind of just sink in so pushing that because you can if you look up a little bit but you're also sad or crying you'll notice that your head tucks right in makes it look more sad more desperate and then um, you can show the joints I'm just hiding them because they're in the way and then the head tilt also shows maybe she's in the middle of a, some tears or some fear I'm um, sorry crying and then the fear is here with the head up and then the mournful head would be the head that we move forward maybe she's mournful careful not to let a head look down like that because she looks like she's about to kill somebody behind her do you see what I'm saying so she is so lost in her suffering and her sadness that I don't want to turn these stupid joints on um, she's not even thinking about what's around her or what's in her immediate surroundings so I hope that showed you a little bit of the potential you have for this story it's such simple staging that you have here you've literally done this oops you've literally just put everything beside each other on the same mid ground and you just pushed it all the way back there it's as if if I draw a couple heads here a couple seats and we're in a really really boring theater you have cinema at your control you have close-ups long shots um, that you can use instead of um, you know these really really simple staging that seems like no camera is being used no attempt to pull the viewer into the experience or make them feel like they're actually living the scene when we put the camera behind the mournful Medusa we feel like we're mourning with her and that's good framing that's good cinema and that's the kind of stuff you guys should be planning so <clears throat> on to a villain challenge but um, before I get on to that uh, I want to remind you all that if you want to submit stuff for the upcoming community challenges you have to join reddit um, and uh, make sure that you're submitting to the community challenge category this is where I go to find all of the submissions for the villain design and I have announced that I will be uh, writing it completely for you similar to what I did with the ancient weapon design it'll be due somewhere around my birthday in June uh, before I take my birthday break so I'll probably take it um, well I will take it starting the 21st so your next challenge will be due June 20th and I'll be submitting the brief for you guys very soon it'll come with a resource pack and it'll be exactly obviously a different story but identical to the way I ran the, the, um, the community ch uh, the ancient weapon design challenge I'm trying to figure out a way to post a poll with pictures on reddit so that you guys can choose the winners of our last challenge um, and the winner will win the Porta Studio they'll win all this kind of stuff I'm trying to figure out how to do that it was really easy on Google Plus if I can't figure it out I'll probably have to use some kind of external website and uh, so yeah officially the next community challenge you don't know what it is and I'm not telling you the topic it's due on the 20th Thursday June the 20th at uh, 5, 5 p.m. Eastern Time and then Portrait Studio sale will be the 1st of June to the 14th of June starting the 31st um, of May in, at 1 a.m. it'll be 15% off so the, what the program you just saw me use will be on sale 50% off uh, in June and that's it if you guys want to join on patreon we will have our patreon critique hour this Tuesday at 5 p uh, 3 p.m. Eastern time so it's a private apprentice only stream for patrons um, and it has to do with uh, our topic of homework this from last month and it's a really really cool one and it's one that I want to challenge you guys with I will probably challenge you guys with this next month um, the one that I'm currently showing so I'm not going to share it but it will be uh, revealed to you guys once our critique hour is done with the apprentices so let's move on um, what you have here is a close-up of a villain and I, I really want to go crazy with this I want to try everything I want to try on this piece so <clears throat> what we have is this portrait and it's a close-up and when I see a villain close up to a camera, I'm thinking like, like he's he's something. He's thinking about something. It's a close up for a reason. This was supposed to be a full on illustration, so you guys really, this person here who did this homework really didn't do that. Um, like a full body, like revealed and all of this. So that's problematic. But what I'm doing here is I'm tilting the head down. 
And that is going to give us a little bit more acting in the scene. He was just standing there like ready for his license picture or mugshot. He wasn't really doing anything a villain would do, which is tilt their head down and plot world domination. So we want to show that this is the kind of character we're dealing with and these are the cinema cues we're giving. Just like that scene that I showed you guys for the villain brief with uh, uh, Littlefinger, this close-up of Littlefinger from uh, Game of Thrones. His eyes were tilted down, his chin was close to his neck. He was just plotting, thinking, laughing at his enemy or something like that. So what you have here is a typical kind of villain pinup. And let's just see where you were before. He was just chilling, standing there. Really, the scars and the lipstick and the eyebrows are the only thing, and the little bit of dark circle makeup, the only thing making him look like a villain. So I zoomed up because I'm planning something for this piece that's a little bit more interesting. And that is to completely darken the piece. You guys remember my gradient tool? I used it a lot last class. I'm just going to completely envelop the whole scene in some shadow. So what's going to happen here is that we are going to lose less info. We're going to lose more information. We're going to have less information to work with. So what do we have then as the carrier of this scene? So we have the close-up. We have some prop work on the character. We have almost no lighting happening. No lighting character. There's zero character in the lighting. So by doing this, by showing less, we're doing more because we're adding to that contemplation that he's doing. And I'm revealing some of the white just around his mouth. Okay, so just take a look at what just happened. The character is a lot more evil feeling. He feels a lot more dangerous. And just like that very first critique I did last class with the murderous, murder-suicide, book cover, lady, child thing. I don't know what to call her. Let's just call her Deborah. okay? <laughs> Um, that crazy haircut of uh, uh, turtleneck girl. When we added that extra amount of shadow in the scene, we, we, we chose either light or dark to work with. When you decide on one end, you have more of a focused use of that end. So if you're using a little bit of everything, so they had the white curtain. Let me find it. Um, so you guys had the white curtain. You had the, uh, uh, the little, where are you? and a little sliver of light coming through. And then really, you were trying to use the best of both worlds and you ended up using and benefiting from neither one. The same thing is happening here. You're keeping everything lit, but also just a little bit desaturated. You're benefiting from nothing because you're half using so many different elements. If you're going to want, if you're gonna like direct the scene to feel a little bit more dark, then go for that dark so you can benefit 100% from the mood that it's describing. And that mood is a villain and we're not joking here when we're talking about a villain design. I mean, it's not half villain or casual villain or, 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 or tumbler villain. I'm talking about a real villain. So as you might have predicted, I am erasing around any magic or anything like that that is helping the character feel a little bit more dangerous and bring in some more color. Merging that down. So no Tumblr. <laughs> Is Tumblr still a thing? Isn't it dead? All right, so I'm increasing that saturation there. I'm going to burn around using the burn tool. I'm gonna to burn around the eyes. Okay, and if I feel like his head has lost its shape, I don't care. Nothing was happening on that upper part of the canvas for me to care so much about the space of his head. What I'm going to do is maybe relieve it a little bit later on. So all we have here now is this villain with a really, really great makeup guru level lipstick eyeliner, lip liner going on. And that's all that's happening. How do I make him look less pretty? How do I make him look less YouTube makeup 
the Instagram. How do I make him look less like that? And that's by distorting the thing that's making him look even just a little bit handsome. And that is the width of his mouth. I would do that. Let's leave the nose the same way. Um, but definitely go for the width of the mouth because that's all that's showing outside of the face. And look at that connection now between the nose and the mouth. The space is so small it's almost uncanny. And now whatever light is coming through, I'm going to start forming the structure of the face for the geometric like origin of every area around that light source direction. So the cheekbone, though you did great here, I'm going to make it a little bit more sculpted because we are taking away a great deal of his beauty by widening his mouth. And we need to do that. For him to feel dangerous, I'm going to widen his mouth. And I'm adding a little bit of extra bulk here to the nose and I'm getting rid of that valley sharing. Yes, remove the inverted triangle of beauty cruise. No, I don't, I honestly, every beauty girl, <laughs> never mind, I'm not going to say it. <laughs> never mind. All right, let's focus, let's focus. So what we've done so far is we've distorted his beauty and we're sculpting now around the light source, which we did reveal, which you didn't have before. So before you weren't dark and you didn't have a light source. What did you have for this painting? What did you offer the viewer that made him look scary? I love villains. I love everything about them. I love drawing them. I love talking about them. They're just so cool. And they're so much more fun than a happy-go-lucky, high vitamin D, no vitamin D deficiency having protagonists. <laughs> right. So this smile here, it's uncanny. It's unrealistic. But what we're doing is making it look realistic by sculpting it as if it was a real form. So we're adding the realism to cartoony form. All right, so show that vitamin D deficiency. Go for it. All right. And I'm gonna zoom out and just start sculpting. So we've already done so much for the scene, but I still wanna do some more. I still wanna, I still feel like there's so much more we can do to make him look absolutely just crazy. So, so I'm going to, instead of having like one big overuse of dodge tools, stupid kind of like noob level dodge tool obsession, what we're gonna do is only choose some select areas where the magic or the obstruction of the flesh against the magic is highest and you got this like high moments of magic concentration. So now this is the only carrier of new color in the piece, so we have to focus on this. This is a focal point now. The mouth and the, and, and the, ma and the uh, eyes are now acting as a dual focal point. So it's his close-up. A close-up is just close-up on a focal point. And you need to start deciding how important or what the, the kind of magic really is that is happening here. Are we going to see the white of the eyes? Why should we? He's a villain. We're trying to create more of a discomfort in the viewer. So I'm going to get rid of most of that white in the eye. And look what that did. Made him look that much more unfamiliar, that much more dangerous. I do want to reinstill the beauty he has. So that space under his eyebrow, which is specific only to females. I'm going to tuck that back out. So we have a little bit of that like divaness to him. Okay. And then there's just still so much more sculpting that needs to be considered. His cheekbones are masculine cheekbones, not feminine. Feminine cheekbones are rounded. Well, right now, the way you did it was you rounded it. What I'm saying is you need to do this. So, giving him more of that structured shape to the cheekbone. And then blending out. Sorry, that's my table. It's glass and it's just always clicking and, and creaking. Okay. And then I'm going to choose where we have areas of shine to make the skin look more organic. Yeah, he's a vampire or whatever he is, but he's still organic. So I'm going to choose where that highlight sits. 
on his mouth, on his face. And this all could have been done with just a little bit more planning. But the thing is, the thing is with asking students to plan is they don't know enough to plan yet. So you need to know what it is you want to plan for for you to be able to plan for it. So some students don't even know they have these kinds of tools at their disposal. So they just don't, it's like, you know, you're not going to see what you're not taught to see. So they can't plan around something they've never used before or a tool they're unfamiliar with. But please become more familiar with light as a tool. It's plan the light. If you don't know how to speak in the light, if you don't know how to speak with light in your painting, you won't be able to plan for it. And how do you start speaking with the way you ask yourself, what's the light direction? What do different light sources do for a scene? When you watch movies, do you watch as a zombie that's just completely spaced out? Or do you look at the scenes? Well, these scenes are invoking something in you. Um, I recently watched Hereditary. Horrible movie, don't watch it, only because it's an amazing movie. But it's just fucking crazy. And in one of the scenes, there's a character hidden in the shadows. I'm sorry if I just spoiled it for you. Um, it's not really a spoiler. It's, it's a scary movie. There's going to be a character in the shadows. But there is so little light in the scene, we can hardly see who that is. But the more you look, and I think they slowly raise that light just a little bit in the scene with the editing, so that we can slowly tell what the heck that was in the shadow. And it ended up being something just horrific and something that sticks with you. And that's one of the scenes that stuck with me. Not the gore, not the magic. It was the straight up way they, they moved with that scene and they used so little light and they did so much with so little light. So when you watch movies, look out for light as a tool, look out for light as a staging tool. Look at how much we managed to do just by darkening so much of the canvas because really all we needed was just that tilt down in his head and that smile. I'm going to blend at his smile a little bit because the more realistically I render him, the more he will shake the viewer, the more he'll make the viewer feel uncomfortable. That smile is very wide, but not too wide that he's not reading as a humanoid or whatever creature that he is, just wide enough. How do I make him look more villainous? I would try to make him look more dangerous. Stop trying to attract your audience. Not every vampire you create is a, is a sex object. Sometimes villains just need to be read as scary sons of bitches. And widening the mouth is one step towards that. Another thing is enlarging the nose, shrinking the eyes. That's one thing that you could do to make him less cute. But if you want to keep that whole handsome League of Legends, everyone's beautiful type of thing, go ahead. Alright, and I'm going to really, really slowly start to push the lower part here. I'm going to try to do it with a new layer, you know what? So just the areas of his neck that are just lost inside and under his chin. And I'm going to delete where I do have light and edge work and again this is edge work that is promoting the focal point and this is a close-up so what was the biggest fundamental change I started with so that's been a question I ask a lot of my students it's kind of like a little pop quiz see if you guys are listening or not okay as for the color wash what you have is this color wash that is allowing warm colors through which isn't making much sense to me so this is a warm color here so what we want to do is work off this purple this you had it spot on this purple is great but we talked about villains and emoting like this uh, feeling of discomfort by using a specific kind of color like remember the green creates a different kind of atmosphere or the um, uh, the pink creates a different kind of feel or atmosphere. A yellow invokes nausea or sick, like a sick feeling. 
So what kind of colors do you want to use on this character? I'm just balancing out the colors you did choose. And then now I'm going to grab. <clears throat> the purple magic business here and just try to carry it out with those little explosions instead of making it one big cheesy scratch I'm trying to choose areas that are the hot spots in the magic kind of try to get the water line as well It's really important that you show it's looking like actual cracks in the skin, so his face is fake. His beauty is false. He has a mask on that makes him look more pleasant, so he's vain. And so having a couple more cracks here and there around the face will really help promote the completion of the character. And then you can keep him looking cute, because that way... The mask is just him attempting to still keep his beauty, his handsomeness. But he's obviously a creature now, instead of a human. So I'm trying to introduce a little bit more light in areas where just a little bit is peeking through. Those ears really weren't doing much, so they're not that important. And I can even flood even more of the scene in shadow. So much more of it and it'll still work. Okay. And then, finally, I'm going to try to find those areas that are getting the shine. Oops. So, any questions at all? Um, the changes have been darker eyes, lighting to help the piece look more villainous, widen the mouth to make him look less beautiful. Um, how, did, how did I light the piece to make him look more villain, villainous? Gave him vitamin D deficiency. Using the light to, ben to the benefit of the piece and changing the angle of the head to give more objective to the villain. Beautifully said, Icolette. Um, exaggerating the smile and his expression and focus the light on that key element of characterization. Really, really well put, Ahmed. Um... Okay, so these are all things you want to see in your notes. One thing I really like to do is just keep darkening and duplicating the layers. So look at what I'm doing. Control J, I darken the whole scene. Uh, I duplicated the whole scene, sorry. And then now I'm darkening the whole scene one more time. Because I know that's my element. I know that's what's going to help me push the scene. So I'm going to keep darkening and darkening and darkening. Of course, I'm not going to turn it black. But I'm trying to find how much do I really need you don't know until you've done it whether or not you've used too much or too little. And giving yourself that before and after, I think I would have liked a little bit more shadow. And I'm starting to remind myself a little bit of that scene from Hereditary. Where he, I, honestly, the scene was probably this dark. And you could barely make out a figure. And it was just fucking like crazy thrilling. Um, so I'm deleting, I mean, I'm darkening it just a little bit, but I am deleting around the areas that obviously are the magic. That purple is a little bit newbie. It's a noob purple. And that's, by noob purple, let me explain myself. <laughs> I mean that the purple could be a little bit more, a variety of different kinds of purples. Or a purple that has a little bit of blue in there. To make it look more like active magic, a moving magic, uh, than just a basic old purple glitter. Um, so what I would do is shift the canvas color over just a little. Now look at that. Look at that kind of purple. Now that is volatile. It just feels so much more dangerous than where you had it before. It feels more blue and this is the before. Okay, so he's a villain. He's just dressed up and he looks like he's waiting for a taxi, but he's, he also knows he looks hot. And after this, this guy has plans for his Uber driver. <laughs> you get stupid. Um, and then I'm just going to complete some of the folds around the mouth. Okay. And this is where I need to focus my attention because this is the only area illuminated in universal light at the moment. 
yeah, don't watch it if you don't have to. <laughs> don't you watch that movie. And then all that fun stuff that people do in paintings, like get Dodge Tool again on mid-tones, make some illumination, make some glow, bring in some of that purple, maybe throw it on the side of the nose or something like that. All that extra stuff, you can bring it in if you want to. I wouldn't put it on the nose, but I would definitely kind of try to illuminate some on the inside of the problem. That's tricky because it's all dark. I don't want to interrupt the shadow. So you can do some of that. You can also, um, I get smudge tool. This is my smudge brush. I get the number five and I'm just going to smudge the whole area out. What that's going to do is add to that activity in the magic, that kind of frequency distortion in the magic. And these outlines that you have all around the scars, they're not doing anything. They are doing nothing. I'm just going to get rid of them. I'm using a darker setting here. They have literally flattened the only thing that's carrying the image forth. You've flattened with it. Okay. So just having a belt of light is much more beneficial to the scene than throwing in your uh, your little outlines there. Okay. And so it kind of looks like he's sneaking on you, like he's ready to do something. And I am going to just keep working toward... creating a more believable distribution of that magic along the scars. And if you want to, if you feel like you're missing out on some extra color, I recommend it. I'd go for like a blue on the mouth. Blue lips really go a long way. Some bluish tips to the hair or some purplish tips to the hair. And be careful with how much shadow or brightness is on either side here. And then if you feel like the whole of his head is gone, feel free to oops, illuminate it somewhat. Just some something like that maybe is the highest you should go. And that'll kind of help reveal him against his background. But I don't think you need it. What you can do is darken it even more, make it completely black. And that's really cool. Okay. Um if I were to make him look more evil, so I'm duplicating the layer again. If I were to make him look way more evil, I would darken the mouth a little bit more. So more of a villain, right? So I blacken the mouth. And if you guys remember that Anton Sugar thing from No, no Country for Old Men, the way it looked like he was gargling like black liquid before each scene. So we can start staining the outsides of the mouth. This is going to make him look more detestable. And we're bringing in sickness, right? We're bringing in something that looks like sickness around the mouth. Staining around the mouth here and there. We're also going to bring in more black around the eyes all the way down. All right, so we're making him look more and more and more distorted. Another thing you can do to make him look more dangerous is completely remove the white of the eyes and bring, bring in whatever you feel carries the character more. So that looks really, really cool to me.
looks a little bit more dangerous. Okay. So you have all these different elements you could be pulling from. You don't have to make him look super evil, but these are your options. So before, tilted his head forward. Just like that. So it, it, the amount of black you used, the amount, the color that you shift to, these are all your choice. Um, you do have to start detailing the uh, hair though. But yeah, other stuff like actually using the lighting and all that, that isn't, that isn't optional. You do have to start putting in a bit more effort in your planning of the lighting. and the story you're trying to tell with the use of it. And you have a villain here. You have one of the more interesting things to write and paint. So it's uh, not hard to know what kind of lighting promotes the feeling that someone is dangerous. Well, it's about you know not staying out too late. The dangers are at night. Make sure, or if someone's wearing a hood and you can't see them, that means their face is distorted. These are all the elements you're using to create the feeling of danger. It's not that hard to imagine what kind of light source situation creates the feeling of danger. And by light, I mean cast shadows off a hood or just straight up shadow in the room. Okay. <clears throat> so any um, questions at all about today's critique? So before, after. Um, a head tilt might do more, tilting the head even more forward, making that distorted fisheye lens thing going on might help you, um, but he's a little bit too cute of a villain for me. I'd kind of try to open his mouth a little, try to show some teeth, um, uh, but then it's just going to be like Vampire Diaries, and I don't know about that. Um, any questions at all? So that's one of the ones posted today. Let's take a look at some of the other villains we saw. This villain that we saw, it just looks more like a story about a big girl who's just tormenting a weak human. Kind of like an angry giant. She doesn't read as a villain at all. Just like a really interesting like lighting key, but without the lighting for some kind of story or storyboard. This, I don't understand where you have the patience to go in and use so many lines. And then we zoom out and it just looks like a classical painting. But you're working with, um, so you are darkening the eyes and you've darkened the whites of the eyes. You've definitely made him look more like a very, very evil kind of emperor, but the expression, the gesture, makes him look really boring. Um, the mask is so much more interesting than him, and apart from the gore here, it just looks like a really proud, any other mm, painting painted for a king or a royal person, the pose, it just looks like he's looking at a painting of himself. This is something this villain would have on his wall. But it's not filming the villain, it's just his picture that he commissioned someone to make for him. So, so I want you instead to point the camera at him looking at his picture. So it would be so cool if he took this painting, created an interior scene of some kind of throne room, put this picture right on top of his throne, right at the top or somewhere where he can see it and admire it, and then draw a picture of him um, and see and compare, like, maybe he's fatter than this, maybe he's just as heroic looking as this, maybe he's tormented, maybe he's covered in shadow with only a little bit of light on his legs and sword. Um, but the way you've de delivered it here, it's very stale, it's very still, it's, it's not doing much to, to, to create fear, apart from the gore, which is a very basic type of unit to use to instill fear. There's no cinematic cues here used to create fear. We don't feel in danger. He's fully illuminated. This one is great, um, but we're not seeing much of the character. 
So he looks like a bad guy, villain, um, but we're, I'm more scared of the creature than I am of him. I'd rather be afraid of him. I'd rather you know how to paint a character than a creature. This was not a creature design assignment. This was a character design. Uh, so I would rather have seen more of the character. Your use of the portrait, the gesture, the, the clothing, all of that is so difficult to see in here. And these are the other ones we looked at last time. I believe we looked at the this. Oh, no, we didn't look at this one. Um, really cool expression. It's kind of broken up. I think you're trying more than you can handle for an illustration at the moment. What I would rather you have done is just focus it around her. Instead of drawing one of her victims, um, draw her. Draw, draw just the bad the Baba Yaga, whatever she is. Um, and make her look more twisted. So it's a, um, okay, so she took her face and was to Jenny Callens as a lifesaver from the goal to reach the eternal life she's gathering men. The night of the five souls, just at the night of their weddings, claiming she's freeing them from men. <clears throat> so that's cool. Um, but none of that is happening here. None of that is... The description isn't helping you complete the scene. The description that I like to see for a, like any kind of character brief is this character has this type of body. Um, when she is first seen, she is you know she looks like this. She's only seen at this time of night. She is seen carrying a veil. She is seen with a tattered bride bridal gown. Her her sometimes she is seen headless. Sometimes. She floats, her feet not touching the ground. Sometimes, you know, you just have to write it so that it's easier to paint. Write it so that you're giving yourself information when you're painting. Um, a cool story is a cool story, but if it's not helping you fill the illustration, it's useless. Um, so what you could have done to show that she's been collecting brides is that you could have put her into some kind of attic room illustration environment and you could have had tons of veils from the different brides she abducted their veils she took their veils and she hung them up so you could have had bunches of veils billowing an attic circular window with moonlight shining in the veils catching some of the moonlight some subsurface and then we have the silhouette of the twisted up bride bony kind of corpse bridey but a lot less cute maybe headless something like that don't depend too much on gore to, to depict fear make sure it's all in the lighting or no don't have any attic window no moonlight coming in because that all looks really beautiful um maybe make it that dark scene that super dark scene you can barely tell there's a figure smiling at you from the from behind one of the banisters or something like that and uh that's it for today if you guys enjoy um, uh, joining these sessions, join on Reddit, join us on Reddit, and uh, uh, make sure that you're uh, submitting work if you want it critiqued. I will probably go back to regular critique hours, but I'm really enjoying the theme, so if you guys want to continue painting some character designs, go ahead for that. That's a lot more fun um, than, than form studies, but I do always promote form studies. Um, and uh, of course, form studies are always very, very important to help you build the building block, help you develop building block skills of um, anything that we're ever going to paint so it's useless if you don't know how to shade a cylinder you can support me on patreon my goal is a thousand patrons i know it's a very big goal um but it's been my goal since last year and i haven't reached it yet if you guys like this channel you want to support please do patreon is the direct way to support me i don't work with sponsors and i don't work with any kind of agency or something like that so patreon is the best way um, if you want to give back to the community and portrait studio sale from the 1st to the 14th of June, 50% off. What other announcements do I have? Uh, that's it. Thank you everyone for joining. I will see you guys on Tuesday, um, the 7th at 5 PM Eastern time. Bye guys.